Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter watercolor postcard for our Let It Snow watercolor December box. Okay, Woo! Woo! I don't have anything to show you because in these tutorials I kind of have an idea and I just go for it and I show you my thought process of what I'm thinking and how I approach projects because then you can take that and start trying your own projects and seeing the process of coming up with something on your own. So. I am using the supplies that I have in the December box. I'm using a palette that has dry paint. I have my pigment powders. I have my brushes, clean water, and I have my postcard taped down to the table. Now, this month, our postcard um, is going a little bit different. Usually, we nominate someone and everybody mails their postcard to that someone. Um, but what we're doing this month is it is December, and December, I think, is pretty infamous for having um, a lot of work for postal carrier workers, UPS workers, FedEx workers, all of these people that are working overtime to um, help us get things in time for the holidays. And so we are going to be painting a postcard for them. I thought the idea could be you paint it and you can drop it in your mailbox just for them. Address it to them. Cute. So that's what we're thinking. Of course, this is your postcard and it's your life, so you can do whatever you want and send it to someone else. Okay. And if you are a postal worker, paint it for yourself. Yeah. There you go. Drop you it in your own it. mailbox. <laughs> um, and receiving something physical in the mail is such a wonderful surprise. I'm going to be honest. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Just getting like a little piece of something that somebody like made you or gave you. It's the best. We call it happy mail. So let's give some happy mail. Okay, so what I'm thinking for this project is I really, really liked the blue background that we did on like the snowy lantern. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that as a background, having like a tree in the middle, but using our red pigment powders within the tree for like an ornament feel and maybe a snowy ground. So that that is what is in my head, okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my placement for the ground and the trees using a pencil. So I'm just gonna sketch just a horizon line. Usually you want your horizon line to be like a third of the way up your paper, but not like, don't feel like it has to be like measure it out. You usually just don't want your horizon line directly in the center. Although I have done that before and the painting turned out fine, so it's not. <laughs> the rules are meant to be broken. They are, absolutely. I'm gonna do a single tree. So I'm just gonna do the trunk here. And you want to make sure, and let me actually sketch this darker. Okay. Don't make it darker at home. This is just so you can see. Exactly. I do this dark so you guys can see, but you want to make your pencil sketch as light as possible. So here's my trunk. And then I'm just going to do kind of like an outline of a tree right here. So that way I know where the background is and everything. Okay. I'd say that's a Douglas fir. It's like a nice Douglas fir tree. I would agree. I'm making that up. <laughs> Me too. I don't know anything about trees. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have an eraser, so I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to take my one inch wash and I'm going to do just clean water for the background. It's okay if you overlap into your tree and your ground a little bit. Because I went so dark with my pencil sketch, if water touches that graphite, it will smear. But yours, if you keep it light, it won't do that. So. Now I'm gonna take my little scoop and my silver, my blue silver pigment. Sprinkle it. I'm really going crazy with it. That's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let that go for a second and then you can do some water drops. The water drops just kind of creates a little bit of movement within the splatters um, or within that pigment powder. And don't worry, that blue is going to pop out the more it soaks into the water. I'm just making sure I get close into my tree. Should I make the ground lower? No, I think it's great. Okay. See that blue is starting to pop? Yeah. Maybe a little more sprinkling. <laughs> Sarah's actually paid by the fleck of 
<laughs> so the more she can get on there. That's right. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do from here is I want my tree to be green, and we have forest green within our paint palette, but the forest green in there is very um, a desaturated green. It's a great green. I love it. I chose it. But um, compared to the bright blue background, I'm wondering if that will feel a little disjointed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint my tree green and then I'm gonna sprinkle blue pigment powder within the tree to create like a blue green color. And that color will then talk to the background, okay? Sounds great. But before I do that, I want to make sure that my background is dry because if I try and paint my green tree right now, then the green will actually move into my background a lot. So I'm gonna dry it. Now this is dry and I just have to pause and just be like, I love the background so much. It's so fun, it's so active. There's so much movement, it's great. Okay, now I'm gonna do my trees. So I am going to wet my trees roughly following my outline. Now remember the sketch outline um, is just a suggestion. If you go in or out of it, it's not a huge deal. And I'm just gonna kind of drop in some green and let that kind of move. Now, if you're like, but I don't know how to draw a tree. If you don't feel comfortable drawing a tree, just draw a triangle. That's it. That's <laughs> same thing. That's pretty much it, right? Like that's just a triangle. And um, if you want to kind of like create texture along the edge, you can move to your two and just kind of do smaller brush strokes or dashes kind of coming out of your tree but you don't want to lose your overall triangle shape and then I do like my tree to be a bit pointed so I'm going to make this taller okay and then you can see here my green bled a little bit along the bottom. I'm not going to stress about that. And then when I get to the very bottom here, I'm going to round it. So if you want to put like a trunk, like the base, you can. I'm going to do that. And then while it's wet, let's drop in a little bit of the blue into the tree. Just a little. We're gonna give that a second. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach the red gold for the ornaments. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, throwing in red pigment powder within this green tree is a little edgy because this is a green tree and we're throwing in red paint, but the pigment powders are so strong and they have that metallic that I think it won't be the same as throwing in red paint. I think it will be different. Let me weigh in as the expert on making brown. This is how I would do it. <laughs> so you're you're thinking we're gonna get brown here? I'm team mud. But you know what? I've had faith in you before about these things. Okay. Here we go. I'm trying to do a little, and I want it just to feel like maybe red lights, red little ornaments. So I went outside the tree. Look at that! Well, okay. I was <laughs> okay. It's perfect. Yeah, so maybe a little here. Look at that. Pretty. Dang, it does look like ornaments on a tree. I'm so <laughs> I'm so relieved. <laughs> it looks so good. Okay, well, we're gonna let that dry for a second and we're gonna think about what else we can do to this tree if we wanna make it feel a little bit more ornamenty or special or any of that kind of stuff. We do have bleed proof white. Uh, it definitely needs snow on its branches. We can do snow. We could do little white beads going oh, down. Okay, okay. We can do like a little white star along the top and then take our deep yellow and put that on top of the white so then the yellow will actually be prominent. How do you feel about one of those tree scarves that go on the bottom? Oh, like a tree skirt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean scarf? Do you I mean skirt? Yes. Um, I don't want it. Okay. 
The reason, and let me talk to you, let me talk you through my process of why. Because I did not plan for a tree skirt. In order for a tree skirt to feel like a skirt, I almost feel like I would need a trunk and then a skirt surrounding it gotcha. so you can actually tell what that is. And I did not leave room for that. And so if I try to put in a skirt right underneath, you wouldn't see it. If I try to do a trunk in a skirt, then I would be hitting my border, which would make the composition feel off. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What about a miniature train? A miniature train? Yeah. No, but that's a cute idea. All right. I'm not going to do that because that's a lot of work. Gold star on top? Yeah. Yes. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use white. And when I do stars, I just do the like, like you're drawing a star and then fill it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to show up strong right now because it's just white, but when we put in the yellow, it will show up. And then I do want to do some little beads kind of working back and forth. I think traditionally that was popcorn. Popcorn. That's what this is. I base that off nothing. I just think it is. Every year I'm like, I'm going to string popcorn with my children. And I've yet to do it. You did citrus one year. That was fun. I did. That actually was fun. Let's do Okay. Cute. And what if, I wonder if I could do like dots of red. Let's try it. I don't know. Okay, cute. Perfect. All right, let's see if we can get that yellow star. What I love about this project too is like, everyone's is gonna turn out different because there's such like this element of surprise with like the pigment powders, the shape of your tree, all of that kind of stuff. And like, these are the type of cards where let's say you did wanna paint like a Christmas card this year, you can knock 10 of these out in like 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can get your kids in on that if you wanted to. Yeah, you could batch paint the heck out of these. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially if you taped them right next to each other and sprinkled across all of them. Mm hmm So the white wasn't dry. So it's just turning my star. You can still see it, yeah, though. Yeah, it looks great. It's just not as a vibrant of a yellow it kind of turned into like a creamy yellow um but you can still see it or you can just wait for that white to dry a little bit more before you try that yellow and i feel like we need a little bit of a shadow let's take some of this i have some black and the pigment powder on my palette dried so i'm just going to reactivate that with my round six and just put a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And I'm actually going to carry that color all the way to the edge because I want there to be a clean border on this postcard. And then I'm gonna go back in with bleed proof white, kind of smear some bleed proof white around. And you might say like you just painted it but you're putting white on top. The white still adds a color and you'll see it when we remove the tape that there will still be a color difference between the white of the paper and the white of the bleed proof white. Maybe a little bit, another layer of shadow right here. Sarah, that turned out really great. Isn't it cute? Yes, I love it. I mean, 15 minutes, you yeah. have this cute little postcard. It's happy, it's bright. Um, it's a little bit chaotic, which is always fun. And I hope that you take this and run with it and have fun with it. Yes. I need one more thing on this. What? Guess what it is. What? White paint splats from the paintbrush. Okay. I'm okay. sorry to interrupt your finale. No, 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 no. It no. needs it. It does need it. Let's do it. Yes. Thank you. That did need it. Thank you. 
Good job. Good suggestion. Thanks. <laughs> so take this idea, run with it. You can change it up. You can not do the popcorn. You can do snow um, chunks on your tree. You don't have to do a tree. I also thought it would be kind of cute. Um, I didn't do this idea, so maybe I'm, it's wrong that I'm saying it. But like if you did this, the snowman, but you dressed him up as a postal worker, and that was a postcard. That'd I thought so that'd be cute. <laughs> so um, you can have so much fun with this idea, play with it. We have such fun supplies that really will let your creativity flow. So um, have fun with this. Thank you so much for painting with me. And let's actually remove the tape because that's the best part. I see those crisp lines. So you see, you oh, can yeah. see an edge. Crazy. It might not show up as on well. That, can you see it on camera? Uh-huh. Okay. It shows up pretty well. That is so funny. You can see the edge clearly, even though it's all white. I know. I know. Well, there she is. Cute. Beautiful. And also, can I just say this little bloom right here where the water kind of had this hard edge is my favorite part. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Can't wait to see what your postcards, uh, how they turn out. Please put them in the mailbox. You can just put their, you know, name on the back for them. Just say happy holidays. Thank you for all your hard work. And thank you for painting with me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.